Okay, um, good afternoon and good evening. I would like to thank the organizers of the APC CMI for inviting me to present at this session. So today I will be speaking about arboviruses in Asia. My name is Moi and I'm from the Graduate School of Medicine, the University of Tokyo. So to begin with, our work uh, mostly involves um, collaboration of infectious diseases in the Southeast Asia region. So we've been working on dengue arboviruses, emerging, re-emerging diseases. So this is an overview of what um, of the research which our institute is involved in. And we are also working on disease control section for the uh, research which involves diagnostics and also um, vaccination and therapeutics as well. So uh, to move on, I was um, previously uh, with the Department of Biology, the Institute of Tropical Medicine. This is in Nagasaki University. So most of the work will be based on the collaboration between this institute and also with other collaborators in the um, Southeast Asia, Asia region. So to begin with, uh, I think the previous speakers have already elaborated on dengue and flaviviruses. Well, there are four different serotypes of the, the um, virus itself. And one of the central uh, questions is to why do some people develop severe dengue and why does they have a tendency to develop severe dengue during secondary dengue infection? So to, um, to begin with, we are interested also in um, how this prior um, immunity towards dengue and what sort of arboviruses, um, specifically flaviviruses, causes um, all this infection and what sort of impact does it have on the subsequent infection of dengue. So um, from the previous vaccination lessons from dengue, uh, it has been going on for more than 70 years. However, uh, there are currently no effective vaccine for the disease. And um, what we can see here is that these antibodies towards dengue, they tend to wane, they tend to uh, weaken after several, after some time. And this is during when uh, you see there's an increase in risk of uh, se severe dengue. So in this case, uh, we have uh, some central research questions, which includes uh, why are there some dengue breakthroughs even in patients with neutralizing antibodies towards dengue, as well as what are the levels of these um, immune um, immunity or antibody that confers towards protection. So there remains a need to define what is disease protection, what is disease protection in dengue and arboviruses in the region, as well as how does all this interplay between the um, epidemiology and how does all this affect the um, disease, uh, uh, the disease epidemic in the region. So what we've been looking on all this while includes uh, several sectors, which is the host vector virus, and um, all this is important to address the challenges in vaccine and therapeutics development. So um, our research um, field work includes uh, looking at what sort of dengue is causing outbreaks. And, and this case is Vietnam. We see that there's an ongoing dengue one outbreak, which has been going on for uh, since um, 2001. And, um, we have also explored some other flaviviruses uh, which are causing epidemic in the region. So this was back in 2017 to 2018. And this is one of the earliest reports of microencephaly, which is associated with Zika virus um, in the region. This is a case report in Vietnam. And then we went on to look at um, how long has this uh, Zika epidemic been um, going on in Vietnam? And we found that it has been going on um, even prior to reports of the outbreak in Vietnam. And that was um, approximately in 2014, in which we identified several different uh, strains of Zika virus that has been um, causing uh, outbreaks uh, in Vietnam prior to the official reports of the epidemic in the region. So again, we went on to explore. Um, there are also changing landscapes of dengue serotypes and genotypes in Southeast Asia region. We are also working in collaborators with Vietnam. We found that there's an increase in uh, dengue tree 
a genotype three outbreak in the region, and there's an introduction of new genotypes um, in Myanmar as well. And whereas in the Philippines, um, there has also been some changes in the um, genotype genotypic uh, changes in dengue four uh, in the Philippines as well. So in this case, we have offered feedback to the local authorities, as well as um, with this, it's important to find out what exactly are the stereotypes and genotypes which are causing outbreaks in the region. So the second part of the uh, dengue epidemiology is that the dengue activity with dominant serotype and genotype um, replacement causes a higher um, number of cases um, each time there's a re replacement of the dominant serotype or genotype. And there are also questions as to, does some virus strain cause severe disease? And um, in this case, we did a comparison between the characteristics of the dengue infection and the virus itself in relation to the epidemic trend, serotypes, and genotypes, as well as study of the virus genome sequences between uh, several countries in Philippines, Vietnam, and Myanmar. And we also have identified um, several quasi species of dengue virus and also elucidated their role in um, differential dengue presentation. So in this case, uh, we have a outbreak of dengue um, tree, uh, which is related to neurological involvement in uh, Vietnam. And here we found that this uh, particular uh, strain of dengue virus, there are two different types of strains which were isolated from the CSF and also from the um, patient sample itself. So we went on to look at the uh, the growth rate of the virus, the two different isolates uh, from a patient with neurological presentation and um, from a patient, from another patient uh, with dengue tree at the same outbreak. And we found that there, uh, this virus, which is isolated from the CSF, tends to grow better in um, neural, neural cells. And so uh, to summarize some of the um, pathogenesis studies of this dengue virus, we found that the um, non-structural region is most likely playing an important role uh, from in the CSF-derived dengue tree virus, which may cause enhanced infectivity in um, these neuroblastoma cells. So again, uh, we went on to look at the host um, section, which is uh, how does prior immunity um, for example, Zika or subsequent uh, dengue or other JE flavivirus ex, um, exposure cause severe um, presentation or vice versa. So we went on uh, to look at uh, the, so first I have to go back to introduce the uh, AD uh, hypothesis as to why some people may have antibodies that are cross-reactive but these antibodies do not actually neutralize the virus. And in fact, it enhances infection and in the end leads to the production of more virus progeny, which is the hallmark of um, severe dengue. So in this case, uh, during primary infection, in the absence of these cross-reactive antibodies, um, some possible outcome could be mild or, um, or lesser, uh, lesser severe presentation of the dengue itself. Whereas in the secondary infection, um, in the homologous type, these neutralizing antibodies or these um, homologous antibodies could, call, um, could lead to neutralization of the virus. And in the end, um, it could lead to a possible outcome of protection. However, for heterogous um, secondary dengue infection, these uh, cross-reactive antibodies do not neutralize the virus, and it in turn leads to higher production of progeny of the virus, which may lead to a possible outcome of severe dengue. So the research question here is that if you have all this pre-existing immunity to flaviviruses, uh, does it give you better protection or um, is that uh, not the case? 
So we need to have an asset which determines the, the activity. So this has been uh, done previously. We have made an assay which uh, can detect the AD activity of the antibodies. So using this uh, new assay, well, we found that uh, during primary infection, there's no uh, virus immune complex that may offer higher viremia levels during as compared to secondary dengue infection. So uh, we went on to develop a much more uh, rapid assay of the AD assay. So this is a luciferase-based neutralization AD assay. So the previous one was a plug base, and in this case, uh, it can be adapted to 96 well and a 384 wells format. And um, it is uh, much more uh, rapid as compared to the um, previous system. So one of my uh, graduate students will have a presentation on this uh, system in the poster section of the uh, conference. So let's go a little bit back uh, to explore on the um, pre-existing immunity or during primary infection, uh, the first exposure to dengue or perhaps flavivirus. So what we see here is that there's an induction of IgG and IgM antibodies, which goes down over time. And um, over time, this uh, IgG may wane, wane, they may disappear, but not entirely disappear. And however, with the in secondary infection, it may cause a stronger reaction. And um, in this case, uh, you will see much more antibodies that may neutralize the virus. So the uh, immunity is complex. We know that there's a whole host of cells which plays a role in um, presentation, severe presentation of dengue. But in this case, whenever we look at the uh, antibodies, we are always looking at the um, levels of antibodies which are going down. But behind that, there are also a whole host of um, cells, for example, the CD4, CD8 T cells, and also B cells that may play a role in maintaining all these um, antibodies that um, we finally measure as AD antibodies. So we are actually interested into looking into what sort of antibodies are actually playing a role in giving you all these um, different uh, disease presentation. So um, we have we are also looking into this um, AD uh, peak enhancement titer, which you have a dilution of these um, samples. And then you can see that uh, that's the titer which gives you a peak AD. So in this sense, um, we've used this to look at primary and secondary infection and um, using different uh, genotypes or a panel of dengue one genotypes, we have looked at uh, what sort of uh, genotypes gives you this sort of um, AD or neutralization antibody titer. So um, we've used our cohort in Vietnam and this consists of 1,000 OER participants uh, with primary and secondary infection. And then we went on and we looked at the uh, neutralization antibody titers. And we found that um, the uh, PET value, the peak enhancement um, titer is consistently higher in secondary infection as compared to that of primary infection. So we think that um, this uh, particular PET titer would be useful for differentiating between these two infections, that's one. And also there is a possibility of um, when you have secondary infection, there will be much more higher light levels of antibodies that neutralizes the virus, which in fact gives you this higher PET value. So when we did a neutralization um, titration with a uh, cells that do not express the FC gamma receptor, this uh, was not as accurate as the PET titer which we were uh, doing. So, and of course, uh, we then move on as to look at um, what sort of antibodies uh, which are actually involved in giving you all this neutralization and infection enhancement activity. So if we look at uh, the IgG genes, it consists of a whole host of um, reassortments um, from different um, genes, which is the V, D, J, and C gene. 
So this reassortment of the genes um, gives you 10 to the power of 17 different kinds of Ig immunoglobins, which are involved in the interplay of protection towards dengue. Uh, towards dengue. So um, here we can see that there are um, multiple combinations, um, thousands and billions of combinations of this IgG arising from the BCR gene itself. So what we are actually interested in is to tease out what sort of um, BCRs are involved um, when you have a secondary or when you have a primary infection or when you are um, when you have recovered from that, um, what sort of antibodies which are giving you this certain sort of protection or let's say neutralization. So in this case, uh, again, we've used the uh, cohort from Vietnam and um, we took samples, um, serial, serially collected samples uh, from our long-term cohort to look at uh, what sort of um, differential uh, BCR uh, expression which are specific towards dengue. So in this case, uh, we did a BCR IgG repertoire and we compared between primary and secondary infection and also against um, healthy controls. Well, interestingly, we did identify several variable regions which are um, which we think is involved um, during the uh, dengue uh, convalescent uh, samples in dengue convalescent uh, phase. So, but we really look at the clones uh, when we look at the IgG and IgM clones and the clonality between all the patients, we actually did not find any shared sequence uh, between two or more patients, specifically on the IgG and the IgM. So we think that uh, this is probably based on more on the convergence of the BCR itself. This not necessarily gives you this uh, certain sequences which are similar across all uh, dengue patients, but when uh, all these uh, multitudes of BCRs are, which are unique, which are some sort of a barcode for each of the patients, are combined together. They, pro they will give a uh, convergence of these antibodies, which will result in um, certain activity, neutralization or ADE against dengue. So then when we look back, uh, it's probably not really related to, uh, it's probably BCR is also important, but we went on to look at the TCRs, the T-cell receptor sequences, and we went on also to look at the HLA, to look at the anti antigen presentation, um, those sequences which are involved in the um, antigen presentation between the B-cells and the T-cells. So this is called the TB-cell collaboration. So we look at the T-cell exposed motive in the dengue patients, and um, we found that there are several motifs. These are the top 14 motifs which are mapped to dengue virus itself, and um, they are shared across um, most of the patients. So this was not uh, seen in the BCR itself, but this is probably something which drives uh, the uniqueness of this uh, dengue uh, antibodies, which leads to recognition of the virus itself. So we were able to map um, what sort of, uh, whether it's structural or non-structural protein, um, which, is react, which is involved in the antigen presentation of the virus itself, not just to the uh, dengue one, uh, two or three, it's across all serotypes. Some patients uh, gives you, uh, again, this is the results from just dengue one patients, and the majority of them has a T-cell exposed motif which is reactive towards uh, dengue one. But um, there are several patients um, across which shares uh, similar motifs that is uh, reactive across dengue serotypes. There are also some patients which also um, recognizes the West Nile and the um, yellow fever virus. So this is a um, allogram based um, calculation. And then we went on to calculate um, what sort of, um, how many percentage of these, uh, of, of how strong the binding will be. And um, we went on to synthesize all these uh, peptides, uh, which were mapped to the virus itself. And um, we look at the um, stimulatory of the uh, IL-4, and we found that uh, these uh, peptides do stimulate uh, the um, IL-4 of uh, the PBMCs. 
So we think that um, what is identified over here is um, useful in, identif in the identification of what sort of um, antigen, se um, antigen sequences, what sort of epitope is um, presented uh, for the uh, T cells. And with the help of that uh, B cells, um, antigen presentation of the B cells, um, that is where you get a much more stronger um, response towards the virus itself. So um, the work is still ongoing on this, um, how the interplay between different uh, flavivirus infection gives you this sort of immune responses. And we've identified several candidate motifs that are associated with primary and secondary infection. We have also identified several uh, T cell uh, motifs, T cell motifs, and on the degree between sharing of each motifs, there are some motifs which are shared across all dengue patients which we have tested. And um, we're most likely going to accumulate more data using much more uh, dengue patients. And with that, uh, we hope that this understanding will be able to accelerate our understanding towards how all this um, cross-reactive immunity um, gives you this sort of um, dengue presentation, or does it um, give you uh, protection against the disease? So uh, moving forward, uh, we, have, we are working with our counterparts from Myanmar, Philippines, Malaysia, Nepal and Sri Lanka to look at what sort of um, dengue virus outbreaks is going on. And it's important to monitor uh, what sort of abo virus outbreak is going on because all this interplay will uh, in the end affect the epidemic patterns of the region, epidemic landscape of the region. So we also went on to look at um, development of assays, which may help in looking at how uh, that when these are diagnostics, perhaps, and which looks at how the um, antibody tight, well, how high the antibody titers are, and we are also looking into much more rapid assays, which will be able to tell you uh, what sort of um, IgGs you have, what are the levels of IgG you have against um, each of the different um, arboviruses. Where well, we're also um, looking at the mechanisms behind that because the total activity will the, the um, activity in all will tell you uh, what exactly the acti um, the titer is whether you have neutralization or whether you have ad antibodies but it does not exactly tell you what's happening behind that and what's driving all these mechanisms to give you this uh, certain um, immune response so we are also interested into looking into that and also using our mouse and um, animal model, uh, which is the um, non-human primate mammal cell model. I did not have time to um, share it with you over here, but um, this is an animal model which is useful for uh, vaccine therapeutics as well as um, studies of mechanism. So um, I would like to acknowledge all our colleagues, which has um, which was all our collaborators, which were very helpful in this um, project, uh, and um, especially from our counterparts from Vietnam and also from uh, Nagasaki University and also from WHO. So, uh, okay, with that, I would like to end the presentation. Thank you.